Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Again, it's good to see you guys, and it's good to see you guys out there on the internet. Uh, this is Mother's Day. If you're around your mother, if you can get near your mother, I'd encourage you to give her a call today. Uh, go see her. Uh, take her out to dinner. You know, the Bible tells us uh, to respect your mother and father so that your days on the earth may be long. If you want my interpretation, don't, and you won't be around long. So, uh, you know, if you've got a mother uh, around somewhere that, that you haven't seen, it, you know, this is the perfect day. Go see her. Be obedient to the word of God, not just because it's the word of God, but it's your mom. And without her, you would not be here. So uh, go, go seek her out today. Uh, it's your godly duty, and, uh, and I know God would want you to do that. So uh, try to do that. We're going to be talking about mothers today. I'm not going to be in Revelation. I'm going to be in Luke. We're going to be looking at Luke chapter 1, uh, 26 through 38, uh, this morning, and it is uh, about the most godly mother uh, that I guess we could find in Scripture because she was Jesus' mother, and uh, not to be lifted above uh, Jesus in any way, but she was Jesus' mom. And you're going to see some traits in her that uh, most godly mothers have. And I'm not talking about moms that, that maybe don't know Christ, but I'm talking about godly mothers that, that, uh, that want to raise uh, their children in the admonition of the Lord. But um, this morning, again, we're going to be looking at chapter 1 of Luke, uh, verse 26 uh, through 38. And if you found your place there with me in the Word of God, I invite you to stand with me this morning in the honor of reading that word. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto the city of Galilee, named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at this saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary. For thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, the power of the highest shall overshadow thee, therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. This is the sixth month with her, who is called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Y'all pray with me this morning. Heavenly Father, we just come before you today. Lord, we're just in awe of the biblical picture of a godly mother here in Mary. Lord, we just pray that uh, we would rightly interpret Scripture this morning. Lord, we pray that you would give us ears to hear your holy word. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all can see it. So we come here to scripture this morning and we see 
uh, that Dr. Luke. And Dr. Luke is he's a medical physician. Uh, person that penned this was a medical uh, physician. He was a uh, follower of Jesus Christ. Uh, he was inspired through the Holy Spirit to write uh, this gospel. Uh, but we see facts uh, that bleed through from his medical practice, from his education. Um, he tells us time in the sixth month. In the sixth month. We'll find out in the sixth month of what. But the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Look, uh, Dr. Luke here is, is naming names. He's telling you where. He's telling you what time. Uh, and he's telling you who. Uh, Gabriel is an archangel. Uh, and he is dispatched from God to deliver this message. Uh, this is not some hoax. Um, Mary immediately recognized the angel. And if you've ever seen one, or if you've ever even been near one, you would recognize the supernatural uh, immediately. And you would have fear uh, when you saw them. Uh, every time in the Bible that someone encountered the supernatural, fear was a, a natural response. Uh, when the supernatural meets the natural, uh, fear is a natural response to that. So, um, But here in <coughs> verse 27, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Now, you know, here in verse 27, what happens twice? She's called a virgin twice. Now, you know, God probably doesn't make a habit of repeating itself. But here in the 27th verse of this scripture, this woman is called a virgin twice. Uh, for those of you who want to deny a virgin birth, uh, you're, you're denying the deity of Jesus. That's what you're denying. Uh, for a Christian to tell me they don't believe in a virgin birth, uh, they're, they're absolutely flawed, and I'm not sure they're a Christian. Um, twice in this scripture right here, uh, she's called a virgin. But not only that, we see that she is espoused to Joseph. And Joseph's going to play a part here later on, but uh, just, just to let you know about espoused in the, the day uh, when Jesus, the days when Jesus was here, uh, a spouse was different than it is like an engagement that we would go through. Uh, even though some people are sometimes engaged for a year, uh, sometimes not. I mean, you know, here in our our time. But uh, when you were espoused in the time of, of Mary here, uh, those things typically lasted about a year. Uh, and it was as if you were married. <laughs> With the exception of one thing, the relationship was not consummated. Uh, they didn't live in the same dwelling, they sleep in the same bed. So they were espoused, but they were still separate. Okay, and these things could last uh, again a year, sometimes two. Um, but uh, the strange thing about this is, if you uh, are engaged to someone now, uh, the relationship can break up, and you may or may not get the ring back, mother. But uh, the relationship can break up, and, and there's no real repercussions, right? In, in this time, uh, if she was found to be unfaithful or uh, something like that had happened, uh, she could suffer a stone. Uh, I mean, so you can imagine if you just put yourself in those shoes for a second. Uh, you're a spouse to, to Joseph, right? Okay, and we're going to see the angel come on the scene here in a minute, but... But think about it. He tells you you're going to have a child. And you've never been with Joseph. And, of course, you're thinking, oh, my gosh, what's going to happen here? But, but just put yourself in Mary's shoes for a minute. You know, again, these, these espoused, when it says that, it means that you're just like you're married. And if you commit adultery or you found with a child, you uh, think about what I'm saying. Uh, you can... You could be stoned at the gate. It was the law. Uh, no adultery. But um, we see here that, that, uh, that she was espoused again to Joseph. And he was of the house of David. And again, Dr. Luke gives, gives us, uh, and the virgin's name was Mary. So uh, we, uh, we see that... Uh, uh, 
the angel, uh, Gabriel, uh, immediately uh, jumped in there in 28. Uh, he came into her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. Uh, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Highly favored. A little grace is really what that means. That's what it's saying. And Mary had an abundant supply of grace. Uh, you know, uh, we talked about maybe um, what would make a godly mother a lot of grace. You know, uh, children do bad things. doesn't necessarily make them bad. They make errors. But you know, a mom is always going to be full of grace, ready to forgive uh, at a moment's notice. Uh, we, need to, we need to understand that. And Mary, uh, Mary was given this dispensation of grace from God himself. Uh, and she was highly favored. Uh, that grace would stay, up, stay upon her the whole time that Jesus was here uh, until he ascended. Um, and you know there always had to be a little bit of uh, animosity around Mary. Think about it. There was always the whispers, well, that's not really Joseph's son. You can imagine. Right. And you know, she had to have a lot of grace to put up with that, I would imagine. And I know uh, even, um, even at the marriage uh, there in Cana, when, when she told the servants, just do what he says. Uh, Jesus told her, he said, this is not my time yet, woman. I always thought that was disrespectful. You know what that was a that was a term of endearment. Just a side note. That was a term of endearment in Jesus' day. Woman. Sure was. Like ma'am. Oh, like, yes, ma'am. Uh, it was a term of endearment. And uh, she said, just she told the servants just to, to do what he says. She knew that he would not disobey her. Uh, she knew that. She knew he was going to never sin. Uh, he was going to obey what she asked him to do. And, uh, of course, he made the best wine ever. Um, but that's kind of a side note here. But um, she uh, but she is highly favored. In other words, a big dispensation of grace was put out upon her. The Lord is with thee, and bless, blessed are thou among women. You know, God was saying, look, I'm with you. And God was saying, I'll get you through this. God was saying to her, blessed are you among women. Now you'll notice among women, not above women. So I know we have some friends that pray to Mary. I'm telling you, that's not right. right. Okay, I'm telling you straight, that's not right. Uh, I, know, uh, I know that there's a lot of uh, a lot of debate and argument in the Catholic community about Hail Mary, full of grace. I know you guys have heard that. Uh, but you're not, you're not to pray to Mary. Okay. Uh, we're, we're not to, Mary is not deity. Uh, there, here in uh, second, first Timothy, uh, second chapter, verse five, there is one God, or there is one God, and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. It does not say Mary. One mediator. You have one mediator to mediate you between where you stand and where God stands. And that's Christ Jesus. End of story. Let's put it to bed right there, Christian. Uh, you're either a believer in Christ or you're not. Uh, thou, let me, let me, uh, let me, uh, let me give you a, a commandment. Thou shalt have no other God before me. That means Mary. Okay? No other gods. No husband. Uh, no, no house. No car. No checkbook. No Mary. Only God. He's very jealous. Uh, we, we need to get that right. Um, here in chapter 14 of John, Jesus saith unto him, uh, verse 6, 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Listen to me. If I haven't proven the point yet, I don't know what it's going to take for you. That was straight from the lips of Jesus. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus is not clowning around. He's not joking. He's being dead serious with you. He's giving you commands. No man comes to the Father but by me. That means no Mary. Now, I'm not taking anything away from Mary. No, I'm not. She was Jesus' mom. 
I would never take anything away from Mary. She's Jesus' mom. You can't talk about my mom to me. That won't work. Uh, so uh, I'm sorry. You're not going to get very far. I know her inside and out. So, uh, and I wouldn't presume to do that here this morning, but we need to get our thinking right. Uh, we do not pray in Mary's name. We do not ask favors in Mary's name. There's one mediator between you and God. That is Jesus Christ. Okay? And no man is going to come to the Father but by him. Okay? It can't be by Mary. It's not going to work that way. God is not going to accept it. He is not going to accept his son being tied to a whipping post or being a second-rate citizen. He, he did that once. And he will not do it again. He'll not see him suffer again. If you're going to come to God, you're going to come through Christ. Now, get it. Get it right today. But again, Mary here, full of grace. Okay? Full of grace. And and was blessed among women. You know, for God to say that about you, that you're blessed among women, not above them, but among women. That had to be, that had to pump you up, wouldn't it? If he tells me, God, Mark, you're blessed among men. Well, you know, I'd be kind of puffed up when I not married. She was humble. She was humble. She was not. Uh, she was not puffed up. And you, you can see right here uh, in Scripture why God picked her. I mean, she was not haughty. She was not puffed up. Uh, she was humble. Um, another trait of a godly woman: humble, humble. You know, uh, you can say a lot of things, uh, but again, when you can't talk to anyone else, you can talk to mom, right? Uh, you can speak with mom when things are, are, are bad, when things are totally out of control, when nothing is going right. Uh, you can always talk to mom, right? Absolutely. Uh, most moms, especially godly moms, and that's what we're talking about here this morning, godly moms. The angel said unto her, Fear not. Excuse me. 29. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. You know, again, she saw supernatural. This young girl, probably maybe 15, 16 years old. You know, they married younger then. Uh, maybe 17. I don't know the exact age. The Bible doesn't tell us. We probably don't need to struggle that point at all. But she was a young girl. But you know, Mary knew Scripture. Mary knew about the Old Testament. Mary was waiting on the Messiah, like every other Israelite. Mary was waiting. Mary had been Mary had been waiting all of her life, just as generations before her had been waiting for the Messiah. Mary knew Scripture. Uh, attribute of a godly woman. Yeah, I want to say it. She knows Scripture. She knows what the Word of God says about her life. She knows what the Word of God says about the situations that her sons and daughters are in. Uh, you want godly advice? Go to mom. You won't like it sometimes because she's going to tell you what God would have you to do. But I promise you, she's going to give you good godly advice. Godly women. Wow. But Mary here, uh, uh, she was troubled uh, at, the, at this salutation, this greeting that the angel had given her. Salutation, a greeting. Uh, and the angel, uh, the angel knew that. Uh, he could see in her face that she was troubled. The angel said to her in 30 here, he said, uh, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Wow. Favor with God. Why? Because she was sinless? No, I never said that. Uh, all of sin comes sin come short of the glory of God. And Mary, if I've offended a Catholic person, uh, we'll take it up with Jesus when we get there. But all of sin comes short of the glory of God. That means every living soul you know, past, present, and future, have, sin, have sinned, are sinning, are going to sin. Uh, so we need to get, again, uh, get that misconception that Mary was a perfect person. There are no perfect people. Uh, why, would, uh, why would God have to interject Jesus into our bloodline if there was a way that two people could be sinless? Uh, since the fall, uh, we've been uh, in sin. Uh, the Bible tells us we're conceived. David said we're conceived in iniquity. We are conceived in iniquity, you and I. So 
uh, how does God beat that? Clearly, he's going to beat that with the virgin birth. Uh, he's going to have the uh, Holy Spirit to overshadow Mary, and Jesus will be born. <clears throat> thou hast found favor with God, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. Think about, think about Mary here. Uh, she, she's just learned uh, that she's found favor with God. She's just learned that she's going to have an abundant supply of grace. She's just learned that she's going to be the mother of the Most High. You know, we, uh, we, we, we think about this person, this, this 15, 16-year-old girl. It has never been married, okay? Never, never been um, in any, had any kind of life experiences like this. But we see her here uh, finding out what's going to happen in the future. And you never see any doubt here, do you? Uh, she asks questions. And, and you know, uh, Zacchaeus asked questions too, but, or, but he, got, uh, he got made deaf, dumb, and mute because he doubted. Uh, he didn't have any faith. You don't see this in Mary. A godly woman is faithful. She believes what God tells her in Scripture. She believes and has faith in what God is doing in the li in her life and in the life of her children. You know, uh, we think for uh, a minute that, that God's not hearing us. That's ridiculous. He wants to hear you. He wants you to come to him with every little thing. Uh, you know, we, um, we so often uh, don't get blessings because we don't go before God and talk to him about the little things in our lives. And uh, I'm not telling you to ask him for a million dollars. Uh, I'm not saying that. Uh, but what I am telling you is you need to go to him with all your needs. All your needs. Maybe not your wants, but your needs. He's your, he's your God. Um, he is, and Jesus is the mediator between you and God. Believe me. Uh, if you got up this morning and you did not pray, you had a mediator in Christ Jesus, a high priest in Christ Jesus that did pray for you this morning. You have a mediator, and it is Christ Jesus. Let's not get off the mark there. <clears throat> but we go down here to verse 32. And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and ever. And of his kingdom uh, there shall be no end. So you can imagine this girl uh, and she says well okay I'm going to have a son and then you hear what the angel says to her uh, you're going to have a son and he's going to be a king not only a king uh, not enough just a king but he's going to be the son of God and not just the son of God he's going to be a king uh, that is over the house of David but not only just over the house of David. He's going to be a king that has no end to his kingdom. He's going to live forever. Basically, he's telling Mary that she is going to be the mother of the Messiah. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Not only is he a king, okay, Mary, not only is he just a king, uh, of his kingdom, there will be no end. Uh, she knew exactly what that meant. She was not confused. She had studied scripture. She knew that the angel was talking about the Messiah. I mean, we're not, we're not surely uh, 2,000 years removed. We're not so crazy that we don't understand that Mary knew exactly, exactly who this angel was talking about. Talking about Jesus. Talking about Jesus. So what a, what a, description of Christ that the angel gives her. He, he tells her, you're going to have, you're going to give birth to the king of kings. Uh, his kingdom, there will be no end. Can you imagine uh, the thoughts in that young woman's head? Well, she gives a response to the angel. And again, uh, I think she had a right here to uh, question. Uh, then Mary said unto the angel, how shall this be? seeing that I know not a man. Look, Mary knew about the birds and the bees. She knew how 
children were made. Uh, we don't have to sit and wonder uh, uh, and conject about whether she knew uh, about where babies come from. Uh, she asked it plainly and reverently here to the angel. She is not disrespectful. Um, she is not rude to the angel. But the angel answered her. And he said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. <laughs> you know the Holy Ghost that hovered above the waters. And till God said, Let there be light, that Holy Ghost. Uh, the dynamis. Uh, we get our word in the English language. Uh, dynamite from uh, this description of the Holy Spirit. He is the dynamite of God. He makes things happen. Uh, when God speaks, he executes. He executes. Uh, when God said, let there be light, there was no lull. Uh, there was instantly light in this universe. Instant light. Dynamite. Dynamite. The power of the holy God. He's going to overshadow Mary. Uh, he's going to uh, make sure that that womb is whole and a holy place for our Savior. He is going to overshadow Mary. Power of the highest, or the dynamis of the highest, shall overshadow thee. Therefore, that holy thing, again, we're seeing something called holy thing. You know, I talked to you all a while ago about being conceived in iniquity. Uh, children are still conceived in iniquity. It's not changed. Uh, we are born in a state of sin. It is passed down from Eve uh, to us. But we see here Mary's child is going to be called what? Holy. Holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called what? What? Look at that there. Look, look at that last sentence. The Son of God. This little girl from Nazareth. And you know, most of the hierarchy of, of, uh, of Israel did not associate with people from Nazareth. They were very poor there. Uh, this was a peasant girl. She didn't have a lot of money. Uh, God makes sure she had her needs met. Uh, we can see that. But we know that uh, we know that Nazareth, uh, they kind of spent too much time with sinful people. They were around uh, people there, and they viewed them as unclean. So they didn't have a lot to do with them there in Nazareth. You know, uh, some place in the Bible talks about can anything good come of that place? Well, absolutely. So God came from that place. Uh, and behold, uh, again, the angel goes further. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth. She has also conceived a son in her old age. Uh, this is the sixth month with her. Here you find the sixth month. You know what time it is. It's been six months uh, since uh, the angel Gabriel had announced uh, to uh, Elizabeth's husband that, that he was going to have a son. He's been deaf and mute for six months. Well, he's not been deaf. He's been mute for six months. He can't speak. Has to write things to his wife. <laughs> but she's... She's six months along in her, pres in her uh, pregnancy uh, with John the Baptist. Um, so um, we see here that um, who was called, uh, uh, here in the bottom part of 36, who was called barren? Well, you know, what are they talking about there? Well, past the childbearing age, just like Sarah was. Uh, so uh, people call them barren, but again, with God, all things are possible if it is his will. And we don't need to think that, you know, you might ask him for a million bucks. And if it's in his will, he'd probably give you the million bucks. But if it's not in his will, if that's not part of his plan, that's not going to happen. If this was in his will, uh, he made Elizabeth pregnant in her old age uh, to give John the Baptist birth. And again, he, he tells us there in verse 37, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. So we come all the way down uh, through this scripture here. See Mary's response to, to, the, to Gabriel, uh, to the angel. What did she say? Did she run out in the street hollering, Oh no, I'm going to get stoned. I'm, I'm, I'm engaged to Joseph and I'm going to be found with child. Does she run out there pulling her hair out? Nope. Does she call all of her friends up and, and tell them what, what has been told? 
Well, they didn't have phones there, so we know we know for a fact she didn't call. But uh, the Bible never reflects that she told anyone other than Elizabeth. Um, but Mary said, okay, this was out of Mary's mouth. Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. What is that? What is the handmaid of the Lord? Okay, a handmaid was a slave. Okay, they were often women's cases. They were kitchen helps. They were, it was a slave. But a slave to who? To the Lord. Okay, she has submitted herself to God. She submitted herself to the will of God. A godly woman submits to the will of God. A godly woman uh, probably wouldn't want to tell me, mother, when I'm wrong. But God demands you to tell me when I'm wrong. God demands you to call me out when I'm wrong. Godly woman submits to the will of God. Submits to the word of God. She's in total submission here to God. That's where a godly woman has to stay. Godly woman. But not only that, uh, she calls herself a handmaid. And again, I told you she should be puffed up when she found out she was going to give birth to the king of kings. The Lord of lords. The son of God. Jesus. When she was told that, you'd think she would be pumped up, wouldn't you? You'd think she would be puffed up with pride. No, we don't see that here. We never see her exalting herself at all in Scripture. Not Mary. Uh, how offensive would it be uh, for someone to say to her today that I'll pray to you rather than to Jesus? No. I promise you she'll be offended. Uh, there is one mediator between God and man. Christ Jesus. That's it. It's only by one name you can be saved. By the name of Jesus. That's it. That's all you've got. Uh, it's not by Mary or anyone else. It's, it's just the Lord Jesus. He pays the price for your sin. Past, present, future. But what does she say here? Be it unto me according to thy word. She totally submits to the will of God. And you say, Brother Mark, she might not have had a choice. She might not. But she doesn't even, that is never brought up. Uh, what is brought up is that she totally and utterly submits to God the Father. She submits to his will. Uh, attributes, godly woman, submitting to the will of God. Uh, we have got to do that, not only women. Men, we have got to humble ourselves. We have got to be in subjection unto God. Um, you can't go your own way. Uh, Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. You can't have just fire insurance, folks. Uh, you've got to have the Lord part of the equation. Lord and Savior. But um, we see here that, that uh, be it unto me according to thy word. Then the angel departs from her. But I want you to think about Mary. You know, we know that the disciples scattered during Jesus' trial. But we also know that Mary was there at his crucifixion. Now, the Bible says a sword pierced her soul. Can you imagine her seeing her son there hanging on the cross? Can you see your son hanging on the cross and not have your soul pierced? I assure you, uh, Mary felt sorrow. But she also felt jubilant relief when on the third day God raised him from the dead. Uh, he, Mary knew the plan. Uh, to think that Mary didn't know the plan is ludicrous. Uh, Mary knew the plan. Jesus always talked about the plan. Uh, Jesus always knew the plan. He knew he was going to the cross. He always knew he was going to the cross. He knew he was going to pay the sin debt for the world. Now, the world, whole world is not going to accept that payment. But I'm telling you, for the ones of you that do, he knew where he was going, and she knew where he was going. Simeon told her that a sword would pierce her soul. I know in that day, holding that little child, she couldn't imagine what that sword would be. But as he grew, you know he told her. Uh, he told her he was going to the cross for the, sinful, for the sins of the world. Um, but you know, attributes of a godly woman, again, uh, no matter the cost, she was there with Jesus at the cross, wasn't she? And there was bad soldiers there. They could have cut her head off, anything. Uh, they could have murdered her right there uh, right while they were crucifying Jesus. Uh, but no matter the cost, 
she was there at the cross. You know, as he hung on the cross, he made he made arrangements for her, didn't he? What did he tell John? This is your mom. Woman, this is your son. Uh, he made arrangements for his mom. So um, these attributes I just described to you, if your mother has these, you need to hold on to her tight. Not another day is promised. God can call her home anytime. Uh, God made her. Uh, he just lent her to you for a few days. Uh, so if you have a mom today, uh, go buy her some dinner. Uh, go take her a, some flowers. I know she'd appreciate it, and she'd appreciate the visit even more than that. And um, if you find yourself lost uh, and not knowing God um, today and you've heard me, there's no time like the present. If you're out there in the Internet world, uh, you know, there's no day like Mother's Day uh, that you could, could come forward and ask Jesus uh, into your life as your personal Lord and Savior. Just admit to God that you're a sinner. Uh, that's the way to become saved. Uh, agree with God that you've sinned and come short of his glory. Uh, the Bible tells us all sin come short of the glory of God. All means all. That means everyone you know. Uh, that means there's not one person righteous uh, outside of Jesus Christ. So just agree with God that you uh, are a sinner and you are in need of a Savior. Because if you die without Christ, you depart to that place called hell. Uh, your mother doesn't want you to go there. And I certainly don't want you to go there. I'm begging you today. Wherever you are, just confess to God that you uh, are a sinner in need of a Savior. And agree with him that, that he raised God, on, or he raised Jesus on the third day uh, to show that he accepted payment for your sin. Ask God to uh, put Jesus into your life as your Lord and Savior. If you've done that today, uh, I'd appreciate it if you'd drop us a line. There's some literature we'd like to send. We'd like to help you in your journey. Uh, we're on um, Facebook. If you're seeing us now, there's links there to uh, definitely uh, get, us, uh, get us some information that you've accepted Christ. Uh, it's the best thing you can do for your mother. It's the best thing you can do for you. Uh, I said last week that in that place called hell, you wouldn't want your son or your daughter to look up at you and say, Mom or Dad, I followed you here. It's not what you want. Uh, you don't want to go to start with, but you definitely don't want to take your son and daughter. It's going to be a lake of fire that's going to burn forever and ever. And if I've gotten on your nerves, I pray I have. I pray you don't sleep till you make this decision for Christ. I pray it earnestly. Um, and, um, if you've made the decision, please let me know. I'd love to send you some literature. And if you're here in Mumford, Tennessee, uh, we'd love to see you in, in the house. We are here in live service this morning. Um, more than welcome. We would love to have you here. You all stand with me. We're going to be dismissed this morning. Go take care of your mom. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we just thank you for moms. Lord, we thank you for this day that you created. Lord, more than that, we thank you for Jesus, uh, who did come into the world to die for all sinners, not that all will accept it. But Lord, we know that he did come and pay the sin debt for the entire world. Lord, we just pray this day that each and every soul represented here has made the right decision and has done something with your word. We know you tell us your word will never return void. Lord, we just pray this day that uh, they've made the right decision uh, for you, uh, for themselves this day. And Lord, we thank you again for all mothers. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus.